uh, 1009, uh, President Bill McGowan, John Beck, <laughs> Dan Coughlin, Lisa McGonigal, Wayne Sockchuck, and Rod Hoffman. Um, let's see what we can do for our next meeting here. I can find my calendar. Um, let's see what's going on on the 15th. Does the 15th work for everyone? Sure. You know, I can, uh, can you, can you hear me, Bill? Yep. Yep. Yeah. I can barely hear Coughlin and I couldn't hear Rod at all. Can you hear me I, now? As they say. I can. Do you hear me, John? Yes. Okay. I can't see anybody except myself, and that's not a very pleasant picture. No, I don't, it, does, it isn't. So, um, <laughs> what I just found out, John, is that if you hit your Zoom box down at the bottom, yeah, then you get then you get a full you get a full screen of who of whoever is talking. And, and on your on your laptop, do you have a, a speaker button on top? that has like three different speakers on it that can increase the volume for you? Just here. Yeah, sure. It's all the way up. It's, it's plenty powerful now. You try this? Okay, why don't we get, why don't we get cracking here then? And um, if we can go into easements, um, Uh, there is a session tonight with the uh, select board. Um, and Wayne, are you able to cover for me tonight with that? Yes. yes. Uh, th yeah, thank you. I got two Zoom calls tonight. So um, <clears throat> we also got a, uh, I can find it here, a, uh, an estimate for printing uh, and mailing of all of the, uh, of all of the easement letters to the, to the members of about, uh, looks like about 3656. $3,656 for printing, 375 um, letters, instruction cards with the envelopes and um, a return envelope as well. I'm not sure why we need that, but that, that's another story. Um, and they will do everything, postage, uh, the whole nine yards. Um, the last I got from, I think Lisa made a, had a call with uh, or, or mail with Chris Sr. and basically said the town's not paying for it. Is that right, Lisa? Yes. Okay. True. So, <clears throat> I guess what I guess what we should do is, if, if everyone has a copy of that or or, or um, heard the number of thirty six fifty six twenty five, is that um, I, I'd like to make a motion that we approve that number um, and ask Lisa to get uh, to engage a company called J.R. Landry uh, to do the printing. And mailing, um, presuming that that everything is okay at the with the uh, selectmen's meetings tonight. Second. Wayne. Yes, I approve. Okay, all, all in favor. Aye. 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 Okay. And, and the only question I have on this, and I've seen some emails go back and forth, um, and, I, and I'll be honest in saying I haven't studied them that much, but on the, the easements uh, that are over private land, that there should be a couple of them. Um, I saw something between Rod and Dan. Um, just how many of those and, and what do we do to fix those things, or do we have to? It's about 60 of them. Oh, my. Yeah. But <clears throat> a lot of private ways. That the easier fix is to have broad language in the release that would cover both um, the uh, the majority where the release the easement would be released in full, but also acknowledge that there are some additional parts uh, of <laughs> of the easement that will not be released because they're part of the private way or something like that, and so. Um, Dan and I have worked on the language. Um, so it's the grinder pump easement plus additional stuff if that's appropriate. 
And so, the, so, the, so the 375 so letters that are going out? All, okay. So the 375 letters that are going out covers everything? Yeah. Okay, good. All right. Now, the, the other thing that we had discussed, and I, I want to nail down, is you know, how do we make sure this gets done? Uh, in you know, consulting with my colleagues, I think we do need to get back and record um, all of the easements. Uh, and how do we incentivize that? And maybe the, the way to do that is to say, when you get it back to us with the recording fee of 106 bucks or whatever that is, um, we'll record it and then we will stop charging you the, 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 uh, the quarterly fee, um, you know, as an incentive to get that done. Because otherwise things get left out hanging and, and if there's a problem, they say, "Well, I didn't, I didn't accept that e that release," and and there's there's something to be fought over. And I'd I'd like to t uh, tie up that loose end. Is that is that in the letter right now? Uh, no, not right now, because we didn't we didn't discuss that precisely. And I'll just, you know simply change the letter to make right. that clear. If that's that seems reasonable to me. I don't know about John and Wayne. What you think? Good with me. I think the chances of getting the 350 all done are, are next to impossible, but that's, oh, yeah. that may be the best way to try to do it. And it's going to require a lot of, you know, <laughs> no <laughs> messaging. And then there's going to be people that have transferred their houses and their new owners and all that. And they don't even know what we're talking about. So, um, we have to get going on it, and this is the way to do yeah. it. Okay, so Rob, would you then update the letter, and then we can put the, a new letter into the uh, insert in, into the inserts? Absolutely. Okay. Now, good. I'll do that so it's it's available for the uh, the selectmen tonight. Um, uh, I think we, we should include a self addressed stamped envelope coming back to us, or some other incentive, or at least an envelope coming back. So it doesn't go to some, one of our tax collector places at a PO box or someplace else that they may be paying their water bill at and stuff like that. So it does, it does include a uh, single-sided, well, excuse me, a, a, um, an envelope to be sent back. So, <clears throat> and then I think I would address it right to Lisa at the sewer commission at town hall, all the way down. So it's, okay. you know. All right. uh, Lisa, can you take care of that? Uh, sure. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Okay. <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> now, um, do they so have to notar excuse me. Do they have to have it notarized? Uh, yes. Okay. So that is oh, that instruction. No, no I'm sorry. We, we are we are granting the release, so the the, the commission uh, execution will be notarized, and you, as long as one signature is notarized, you can get it recorded. Good. So we sign it also then? Yes. Oh, it's, okay. it's, I mean, the, the way I'm thinking about it is the, uh, the select board is authorizing the commission to take care of this. Uh, and the commission is issue, uh, uh, executing the, the release or in, in some cases, partial release. And, you know, we've got signature blocks for three, the three of you to sign off and then uh, acceptance by the homeowner. Okay. So, you, you know, it is the town. That, that helps not to have to have them have to get a notary because that's going to stall yeah. it some more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fine. That's good. Good stuff. So when do we want to send the letters out for the um, pre-notice as Wayne suggested um, at the last meeting? Um, so the letters to all the residents as a pre-notice that they should be getting a registered letter. When do you want to send those out? I don't know, it could go out this week. So that that's not included in this price though, right? Right. What letter are you talking about? So um, as Wayne had mentioned, um, a good point last, last meeting was that a lot of people don't pick up registered mail. 
um, because they don't know what's coming. And so they just leave it at the post office so it'll get sent back to us. Um, so to alleviate that and also for um, new homeowners, Wayne was suggesting doing a pre-notice letter just by regular mail, just letting all the residents know that um, a registered letter will be coming to release the easements. Um, so do it as a postcard too, if you want to. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, my question is, can we do that ourselves? Do we need to get a printer to do that? I think that that's what we talked about last meeting was that we were going to do that ourselves. Okay. And I like, I, I mean, Wayne's idea of having a, uh, a postcard, we could probably get a mailing list from the water department, right? If we don't have it ourselves. Yeah. And then make labels ourselves and just send a card out. Well, don't we have the addresses for, from the, uh, I, the printer is going to print out the addresses they're going to, right? Yep. I would think so. Yeah. Right. So they could just print out another copy for us or something. All right. So, I mean, I'd like the idea of the postcard. How are we going to execute this then? Just, um, we got a mailing list, um, you know, we put an alert on it of some language that just says that a letter's coming out. Yeah. The printer might just be able to do this first, meaning today with printers, they've got the ability to be able to, you know, take this list of people, put it in the computer, do the envelope, do the dear Wayne inside, do the, the letter, do all this is going to be done by the computer. Okay, yeah, I can ask them to so price out the, to um, run another postcard yeah. that just says this. Yep. Postcard. I'll ask that in the price that out. I'll right. ask them to price that out the uh, postcard. And we should probably do it in a color that people are going to want to look at it. You know, that not just white and they just think it's you know trash mail and throw it out. And he might know he might know a way of of, of getting people's attention better than I. So we want to go the um, so we want to go the postcard route. Yeah. If that's cheaper. Yeah, it's not going to add a lot, I don't think at all. No. But it should tell them that you'll get this and when you when you sign it and return it, the fee will be ended. <laughs> Again, yeah, incentive. Yeah, that's a, yeah, a good incentive. It will be yeah. ended in the next billing. It will be reflected in the next billing period. Perhaps we better because we don't want to go and adjust everybody by the date that we got it back or that they sent it or. Well, you know, that's a good point, Wayne. So what if some, somebody doesn't do it? We just keep billing them, right? Right. But if we're, if we're gonna, are we gonna stop the billing um, in the next period for everybody or only, or, or what? No, but if you have a date that says, if you get this back to us by this date, it won't be, re you know, it will be taken off of your, your next, you know, that bill. Or, you know, just tie it into something that's, even is more of an incentive. But I'm just thinking about the person that sends it in that says, I only owe you $72.27, not $150, because I gave you this back on this date or whatever. So, yeah, prove it. Yeah, prove it. <clears throat> so they're gonna ask, well, when's it coming off my bill if I send this in? Gonna have to keep track of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is. Do the language for the um, for the postcard. We <laughs> after the call, I'll take I a can, crack at it. I yeah, can, let, uh, yeah, it, I think right, and then and then again with that incentive piece, you know that if you get it done now, we'll, you'll be, it'll be taken off in the next billing cycle. And you want to get a, a proof from the printer too, so that that's nothing happens between giving the stuff and yeah, good and idea. Sending it out. Do we uh, have Lisa check the names too to see if any have changed since we originated <coughs> originated the list? Well, Lisa, yeah. you already did that. Yeah, I did. Um, I'll have to, I did it a few, um, maybe a month or so ago. Um, I'll have to revisit that and just make sure. Why 
How about the uh, easements themselves? Are we completing those to some degree with addresses or possible well, information first? We, yes, that needs to be precise and my office needs to take care of it just to make sure we're going to have to look at the titles just to make sure you know, you know we find all the easements that are out there um, and then have a reference you know book and page because each easement release says you know i you know the homeowner has granted the easement for you know recorded at book and page and now there's a partial or or you know there's a release of that referenced uh, easement. So that, that has to be precise. How long would that be? I have, you know, a, a paralegal in my office who can, you know, handle the, you know, just sit at his, at his desk and, and uh, um, go through the, the registry records to get that. But it's, it's, you know, a couple of weeks at least. So, so with the holiday and everything else coming up, should we, should we shoot for a, a like a third of January? We'd like to, to send these things out. I mean, what um, does everyone think? I don't know. Probably. Do we? Probably it won't get lost. Yeah. Well, I mean, if we have to go through all these these uh, addresses for a couple, you know, it might take a couple of weeks. Yeah. Uh, and no, then, I would, yeah, I would think by by middle of January, makes you know. Is there a way we can have them release the have a language that they're hereby releasing any and all easements granted to, to the or granted by the co, you know the co, town of Cohasset for sewer, and then you look up the um, the information as you're looking it up. You just you know you're we're then signing off and we're going versus having them have the exact language that's going to that they're going to need which won't happen until the middle of January or something. In other words, is there a way of um, speeding up their, accept, their acceptance of what we want to do? Right? Or no? Yeah, I mean, we could leave it, you know, just send it for them to, you know, have the easement book and page reference blank to be filled in later yes we can do that um that might yeah and then they they will end up getting a copy once it's recorded right it, will, will they or not um an original will come back that says it's recorded to us i believe right whoever yeah, uh, because it. yeah and then you have the ability to just when you get those it's sending those back to the people a copy of it yeah good I mean, otherwise they could see it if they did their own title search, but that they wouldn't know the book and page to go into right away. Does this make some sense here in terms of trying to speed this up a little bit? Yeah, the, the logistics of it. Yeah. Let me talk to my folks to see what, you know, uh, what they think a time estimate is for, for, for doing it. Yeah. It'd be better if we could get it all done um, first and then and then have them sign it. But if we can't, uh, getting them to sign it in in blank, um, you know, without that reference number, a reference page, um, would work. Yes. Okay, so Rod, you'll get back to us on that. Yeah, I will. Okay. Yeah. Now for the selectmen tonight, though, they're going to say, "What's the what's the length of this process? How long is it going to take?" So it's really going to take two months or so, right? Well, I would no. I would say we, if we can get it out the beginning of the, I just pick a date, the tenth of January or something. Right, but if if Rod isn't done with the title searches to be able to do it, and that's a that's a pretty big deal of going through, you know, the titles and finding the, you know, the thing, and it may have been, you know, two owners previously that did it, not the owner mm -hmm. today. So you've got to go down to this person sold it to them, then they keep going down on the property. So my thinking. So yeah. So the simplest, if we can get 
225 or 325 done quickly and easily. And then the other ones that involve two easements and some easements that we're keeping the, the, that 75 right. at 50, we're gonna be a, a lot further ahead. Um, and we're gonna get this off of our plate and, and go from there. You wanna say February 1st is a date? Just to be safe, if we send it out sooner, that great. Yeah. Now our next billing is is when is it in Fe is it in February? What's the billing for the let's for, let's say for the end of December or for the first quarter? I mean, it'd be, it'd be nice to have it tied in so we have enough time to be able to adjust it on the bill. Otherwise, they're going to be calling us for that. I'm just looking at one of the abatements to see if I can see a date, a date in there. So. Um, Yeah, it looks like the, uh, uh, in, in, in 20 and 19, it was uh, February 1st, February 1st and then February 3rd. Okay. Well, we, we weren't going to reduce their, their charge for the, the quarter ending 1231. So the, uh, the first time the charge would be reduced would be what? Um, right, theoretically show up on the March bill, which wouldn't be done till April, right. which, which would be- That would for, give us time, you know, that if we get a first wave of people responding quickly, then they, uh, then they would not be included on that first quarter of uh, 2021 right we'd have that time yeah because right now our water bill is due on 12 2 tomorrow um for the my re last reading was 10 1 2020 so 60 days earlier so it takes them 30 days to do the bills so the next due date is going to be by April, April or May. So that should work out. Yeah. So yeah. because it'll be for water through January 31st on, on, see on mine. So mine and the red oh. rating 10 1, it'll be one, it'll be two one that it's red again. If we can get it done by the end of January, I think we'd be okay. Anyway, I think we've got, I think we've got time to be able to get it so it's off people's bills by this by the second quarter. Yep. Or the however that, really the third quarter of the fiscal year. Yep. Okay. We all set with the easements. Postcard would probably go out in December then. Yeah, I mean, um, again, I'm, I'm sort of thinking that it might get lost in all the sort of Christmas stuff. So maybe we send it out like the second or third of January and then the letter goes out four weeks later. Okay, makes sense. So uh, if we can go on, do, do we have anything to discuss about uh, CJC? Rod, have you heard from any, uh, any of the folks? No, I have not. Okay. I've heard nothing. I just wanted to see if we had anything. Lisa, have you heard anything from Brian or anything? I've, yeah, I've heard nothing. Hmm. Okay. All right. Um, capital costs. Uh, is this with regards to the garage door specifically? Yes, it's, yeah, well, not specifically, but um, it is included with that. Um, so I had forwarded to you guys the email from Don Pyatt regarding, um, that was on November 19th, um, regarding the capital items. Right. Um, he listed them out, he sent the spreadsheet on where their, um, where these would be paid out of. Um, so it had the SCADA upgrade, 
uh, the SCADA mission system telemetry solution, pump stations, bond doors, the RAS pumps. Silencers and, and grid screw bars into that, yeah. So I thought we approved this, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, I thought we went and, um, well, it doesn't matter, we could approve it again if that's the case. I mean, if, because I think we need to get it is, is right. the bottom line. Well, from my notes before, from the last meeting, it was approved um, based on the numbers um, coming in for installation. And okay. I think that we have those numbers, but- um, Do you know what they are? Bind doors though, the bind doors was approved, um, added it as it is because it didn't, it included the installation. It just didn't include the painting. Um, one of them did not include installation. Um, on the three quotes that um, Rob and Scott sent us, uh, let's see. So the bond doors included installation, but did not include painting. I think it was the grit screw. Right, those two we didn't have in installs, but we also talked about having Woodard and Curran just taking that on and, and taking yeah. care of it. Um, but I think for I think the thing that is out there that we need to we need to address immediately is is to get get an order into the barn doors to, so that they can fabricate them, right? Yeah. Um. So I I think it, we've already okayed it. I don't you know I, I would just tell Scott to fire away. Okay. Sounds good. Right. Do we have any other business before we get to abatements? Um, um, I asked a question of Rob and I haven't heard back from him about uh, the deep yeah. cleaning of our membranes. It was scheduled to be done earlier this fall. To my knowledge, it hasn't happened. Lisa, can you ping him to, like after the meeting and find out what's going on? Sure. I mean, when they make commitments, they ought to either live up to them or let us know yep. what's happening. <clears throat> okay. We have a long history of postponing these deep cleanings. Mm -hmm. We'll get on it. So before we get to abatements, um, I, um, I have, we have on the line, uh, the attorney for um, Matthew Shannon, and we also have Matthew Shannon on the line to talk about the Diab, Diab lots, Diab lane lots. Okay. You want to bring them on? How how do we? I'm going to allow them to talk. And Matt, um, Matt, and Stephen, are you guys? Can you guys hear us? Yes, we we can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. This, this is Stephen Ryder, and I'm an attorney, and I'm representing uh, Matt Shannon. And he asked me to, uh, he's also in line, and he asked me to participate basically to find out what's up. <laughs> We're not exactly sure uh, why this was on the agenda. So um, if you could kind of give us some insights or what your questions are, we'd appreciate it. I'm trying to find my piece of paper here with all that crap on it. I, um... <laughs> And a commissioner since this first came up, and I think uh, one of the things that um, what's come up was the house got built um, at 14 Windy Hill, and it was originally designed as five bedrooms, and it got changed to four bedrooms. So it brought open the case of what was what was the current status of the balance of the EDUs that were transferred 
originally from the Templar house to um, what they were going to Howe Lane and um, Diab Lane. And one of the things that got me was that we had a, uh, we moved way back in um, 2013 to give the right to assign um, shall herein and be incorporated by reference of the exhibit, the right to assign shall expire 36 months from the date of this vote and upon assignment of such permits and application for a building permit for construction on any of those lots 34, 43, 44, and 15. Then um, the applicant came before us later on and I don't remember what his reasoning, I don't remember what he actually said to the board and I was on the board that, um, that he was, that he was going to do some different lots and how would we um, consider the EDU at that time. And then at that time, the uh, EDU value was $2,500 per unit over four um, and was different than our current rates again today. So um, we sort of want uh, a, an end to this um, single exemption, probably the only exemption that was ever done in Cohasset for moving EDUs to be something that isn't a windfill for the owner and a detriment to um, the rest of the ratepayers in the town. So that's, um, that's where we were. And th there were a couple of letters uh, that went through uh, la last year, 2019, and I read one that said, um, this is it. And another one that, that listed out that, okay, it's all right to be on Windy Hill Lane. So um, I wanted to find out what Matt's intention is. And, and I want the board to understand that what was supposed to happen within 36 months is now another 36 months gone by and what's up. And does the board want to continue to let this go on further? Or does the board want to say, all right, we're going to give them six months more and that's it. And we've got to, we've got to stop this. So, so, um, so Wayne, to be clear, uh, I think I joined the board just when this was starting, um, that uh, the original permission was 36 months from six years ago. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Seven so years. So we've already given uh, um, Mr. Shannon six years to utilize these EDUs at a discounted rate, right? Correct. Okay. Okay. So the, the okay. So the question is not the, the availability of the EDUs. It's the, that the rates have gone up since this was this assignment was allowed. And the question is whether when Mr. Shannon comes in and applies for his uh, permit, whether he's covered by the older rate or whether he has to pay the new rate. Is that what I understand? Correct, correct. Ah. So the new rate is approximately $35,000 and he, he paid approximately $6,000. And in between that period, it was $18,000. It's it's it has gone up significantly, so um, you know that's the situation. So someone ah, okay. building next to him is going to be paying a significant amount more, more than what he is. Got it. Um, could um, is it possible? Because I because we really, I I mean I now see what your issue is, and we really didn't know what the issue was. Is it possible to kick this over to your meeting on the 15th maybe? And that'll give me a chance to talk with Mr. Shannon and kind of plot this out and maybe even send you a letter that talks about what the going forward plans are. Right, and, and by the way, the board has not, um, I, I asked to put this on the agenda so that we would get to, to basically, um, notify um, uh, Matt, Matthew, and his attorney, if you wanted to, 
that we were looking into this because of the situation that that recently happened, and we want to um, we want to make sure that that um, because someone didn't make the previous three year commitment and we should not have extended it beyond that, but we did. And then when we did, we, we gave uh, a very favorable um, situation we let continue and then nothing happened for a couple of years. And then all of a sudden we're back to this, this situation again. So, so the board has not acted and said, made a new motion saying that effective this date, you know, this is gonna happen. Um, but I think we can we can have some discussion by the fifteenth and 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 uh, do something. Good, good. That 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 would be very helpful. I this is helpful. I I now understand the issue, and uh, and let let me talk with uh, my client about it and think about it. And then uh, if you could put us on for the fifteenth, um, hopefully we can resolve it then. Okay. Now that is just me speaking. So I'd love to have John and and Bill. Um, make some comments so that we can, I think it's, obviously it's. <clears throat> well, well, I mean, I, I'll, I'll make a quick one. I'm, I'm, uh, and, and thank you, Wayne, for putting that out um, as succinctly as you did. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sort of of the opinion, I don't think we should do much of anything. Um, if I was building next to Mr. Shannon and found out that he was paying a much lower rate than I, I wouldn't be happy about it. Um, and I, and I think we have to look at, um, what I, I mean, we have to basically take care of him just as we would any other ratepayer. He's, he's had two opportunities, uh, because of the agreements, the agreement that we made initially six years ago, uh, to execute and he didn't. And, you know, for whatever the reason, I mean, I, I'm not going to judge that, but at the same time, we gave him an additional three, you know, 36 months, nothing happened. So I, I, you know. I, I, I'm not so sure what we can do. I think we have to go, in, uh, at this point, I think we have to go uh, to the prevailing rate. Okay. Now, the reason, um, uh, Attorney Ryder, is that the money that, that um, we are getting in, in a situation like this, is one that the ratepayers are paying more of their share uh, than what then meaning our expenses go up every single year and we can't raise the rates every single year, but we can raise the um, people coming on board that are causing the rates to go up by additional capacity and things like that. So this is like we project each year how much we're going to get from new connections. And, um, and this is like, well, we get in three connections, but they're not at that rate. So we have to, charge more for the others in order to make up for the, the shortfall. In yeah, I get it. Yeah, so. yeah no, I, I, I understand. And, and your, your records indicate that when these were originally bought, they were uh, $6,000 each? Correct, and change. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay, I get it. Yeah, I, okay. I appreciate you taking the time and explaining that to you and we'll, we'll uh, cogitate over it and Talk to you again on the 15th, if that's okay. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Yep. Okay. All right, um, so next up we have e um, abatements. Yep. And I have uh, Jack Mullen on the line to um, clear his case for 58 Margin Street. At um, last meeting, we agreed um, the Sewell Commission approved $300 off his bill um, for abatement. And um, what is he looking for as an abatement? Pardon me? What's the total amount that he's looking for for an abatement? I know it's a lot of, it's like 10,000 gallons of water, right? Um, 2,500 cubic feet, so that times seven is. He was looking, looking for, for $741.78. Um, yeah. And I think, what did we, 
vote on 350 or half of that or what? 300. Okay. And Mm. And this, I don't think he had a, a second water meter, so no. we can't, we can't, we can't get a have a a an accurate amount um, that's going based on sort of history, meaning in two thousand nineteen he used twenty five hundred cubic feet and. In seven, the uh, several months later, seven one twenty twenty, he used two thousand cubic feet. So, what happened in the two thousand nineteen when it was twenty five hundred? Did he? Um, Summer built still- never exceed twenty five hundred cubic feet, and they didn't this time, right? Um, Mr. Mullen, can you unmute your computer so we can hear you? Well, I guess he's at 10,000. He's trying to do the difference between 10,000 and 2,500, I guess. But um, I think that what's, um, you have him unmuted, Lisa? It's, it's, I do. He has to unmute himself, though. Yeah. Yeah. Because I have allowed him to talk. It is, it is definitely a high number. <laughs> um, Mr. Mullen, can you maybe, um, maybe rejoin? Maybe that's the way to go? We, we can't hear you and I can't really do anything. There may be merit in this, by the way, and I don't. Anything now? Yes. 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 Thank you. You got me now? We do. Good. Good morning. Good morning. You want to discuss uh, your request, Mr. Mullen? Yes. Um, I did have a uh, inordinate amount of water usage last quarter due to the, uh, the drought we had. And using that much water is on me. Um, but the amount of water that went down the drain to the storage system is a very small portion of that 10,300 cubic feet. Um, I certainly understand the system that storage charges are based on incoming water charges. But um, we also have to be reasonable here in um, understanding that a significant portion of that did not go down the drain, so to speak. Uh, Based on the way I looked at it, my highest usage, as you noticed previously, was 2,500 cubic feet in any quarter. And uh, I didn't dispute that usage at all, uh, even though that 2,500 cubic feet didn't go down the drain also. But because I overdid it this quarter with 10,300, I would certainly be willing to pay 
based on the previous high amount of 2,500 cubic feet. And if I've done the math correctly, um, the difference between the 10,300 and the 2,500 would amount to approximately $800. Now my math may be slightly off. I don't know the rates exactly, but um, you know, that, that's my point. Uh, I didn't add to the burden of the source system. So to uh, get a, an abatement of that amount of money. And I certainly understand it would be a one-time abatement. You have a second meter. Hey. Um, I don't think he has a second meter, no. No, I do not have a second meter. Right. Why not? Do you have one? Yes. You must do a lot of watering then, huh? That's um, irrelevant. My question was, why don't you have one since you use 10,000 gallons of water on your lawn? Yeah. We wouldn't be having this discussion. Yeah. Because we had a very severe drought this year, as you probably know. Yeah. And well, as, he, I, he and as I said to open this up, yeah. I overdid it. I didn't realize how much water I was using. Right. John, he did present a bill that goes back to 2013, and, and there, is, there is one uh, usage of 2,800 gallons, but for the most part, um, actually two of them. So we could, be, um, we could be off a little bit. He's using 2,500. It could technically be 2,800 because there's a couple of instances where that well, that was the amount. Um, and, but most like, I, I'm, I'm, in, I'm getting to be in favor of, of um, increasing the amount that we, we had um, approved before uh, to $700 or so as a one time. Is that a motion? I make a motion to approve. Uh, should I do the 741.78 or do the $700 or whatever? Would you accept $700, Jack? How about the 741? Okay. I, but I did the, the uh, you subtracted um, 2,500 and I'm looking at 2,800 on, uh, on, uh, the 2016 bill and on the 2014 bill. So All that right, I didn't, I didn't that, go back that far. That'd be about $41, wouldn't it? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> I make a motion to approve a $700 um, rebate abatement uh, one time for uh, 58 Margin Street in Cohasset. I'll second. Changing the 300 to 700. Yeah. yeah. Minus whatever we had proved before. <clears throat> right? Well, no, the total abatement would be, would be $700. Right, correct. We had previously done 300. So now we were increasing it to 700. Right. So I seconded that motion. Okay. John? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Hey. Okay. Hey, you gentlemen, you? thank you very much. Okay, next. Next up, we have, um, we have John Curran on the line for um, 15 Spin Drift. Um, he came before, um, the abatement was presented at the last meeting, but um, the Sewer Commission didn't approve it until we had more information and um, photographs. So I did forward that to you. Um, we did? Um, when did that, when did you send that? November 18th. So John, if you could unmute yourself. Yeah, I'm trying to leave the meeting. I'll remove you. Okay, thank you. 
Bye, Jack. Bye bye. Hey, good morning, everyone. Can you hear me now? Yes. Great. How, how are you doing? Yeah. We're doing great. I hear it. Um, yeah, I was unaware that the, I was able to participate in these um, town meetings, so I appreciate you all including me. You're welcome. Um, I, I can just summarize the case for you guys. Uh, we have uh, lived in Coasset since March of 2012, and I understand the way that the sewer uh, yeah. Yeah. works. It's based on input and what goes on the meter is assumed to go through the pipes. Uh, we discovered a massive leak that we had under our driveway that was just just uh, downstream of where the uh, meter was. So it was our uh, responsibility to get fixed. Once we noticed it, uh, we had Jay Perino, uh, who was very busy, does a lot of commercial work for the town of Cohasset and Hingham. He was nice to come out and, and um, fix it quickly. As soon as we noticed it was our problem, um, we, we uh, got it fixed as soon as he could come over. And uh, we had it fixed and patched. I sent pictures to, to Lisa of the before and after of the leak and then the patch of the driveway under, under which there was just a ton of sloppy mud and everything and it leaked out the, the driveway. But nonetheless, I went back to all the quarterly bills and figured out our cubic uh, usage average uh, straight line of about 3,000 uh, per quarter since we've lived here. Um, and, um, you know, it was about 10,500, I think, in this quarter, uh, you know, we were away in, in uh, for a week or two in the summer in Tennessee seeing family. So I know that this was due to the, the, uh, the increased usage is specious. I.e., It's not actual. It didn't go through the pipes. Cohasset sewer did not bear the cost of this excess usage. So I just wanted to uh, present that. And then I, I also um, want to point out that I talked to Aquarian. Now it's wear water, but Aquarian actually sent us a check. Um, for the on the inflow side because we got water relief on that side so um, that's actually water that came in but the water again I just want to point out didn't didn't go through the pipes for this this leak. So we should we should meet a located. Um, I think well I'm not I'm not uh, sure about that because we have a meter on our house but I think the meter is at the bottom of the driveway right is that where the, the, the usually comes in from the line. No, it's usually at the house. Okay, then it's at the house. Yeah, I, there's a, there's another thing that's that 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 was our responsibility. It was like eight or ten feet away from that at the bottom of the driveway. I don't know what that's called, but that's not the meter. Then the meter must be on the house. Um, uh, yeah, go, go ahead, Dan. Yeah, I'm just I'm just saying. I mean, if if the leak was before the meter, then it would have been registered as use. Well, I so, may be mis, mis misstating terms because I'm again I don't know the vernacular here. But whatever the, um, th this is what Aquarian told me when we were going, when we had them out to check on it and I called a lot of people as soon as we knew it was our problem, whatever that thing is at the bottom of the driveway that, that is like a, uh, it's, it's a circular it, it, uh, device and it, 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 it shows where, you know, anything street side is, is the, the water company's uh, issue to fix. Hey, and John, is that four inch in, in diameter yeah yeah i don't know what that's called but that's a shutoff thank our okay okay and that's true so the the town takes the water department does to, to goes to that point which is usually on the property line yeah then then from the other side it's your your you, know, you have yep. to be responsible for the valve um, right yeah. but it seems as though um this was outside the house and the meter is inside the house. Um, and and that's something you should look at because you should go down the basement or wherever, if you have a basement over there and you should see a, a meter and you'll see some wires coming off of it because they're electronically read. Uh, mm -hmm. most of them. So then that's the water that entered the house. Now, if you turned on a hose and you were washing off the pavement to repair the after the leak was repaired and get rid of all that mud and stuff, you'd actually be using water that mm -hmm. that might not go into the into the sewer. Um, but it doesn't sound like I don't know if that's what what happened. How you could use ten thousand gallons? Um, well, it, 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 it was running. Sorry, it was it was running continuously, and it you know because it was bubbling forth probably under the ground for a long time. You know. It, 
um, we didn't notice it until it raised above ground. But when, when, when Jay came over with his heavy machinery and dug it all out, it was just sloppy, like wet sand silt. And so he said it, it could have been going on for longer. And then it, it, it comes up, you know, it, it, there's, there's a latency period before which you can't see it come out, I guess. I mean, I'm not a, I'm not a geologist or a, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bond manager. So I, I, I was home to see this and get, get it taken care of. Right. Um, did he, did he fix a section of pipe? Yes, he did. He did. Dig down eight, six or eight feet and get it. I was, I actually watched it. It was fascinating to watch. Fixed the piping, got new fittings. He did it on Friday, September, I think it was the, uh, what was it, September 4th or 5th, right before Labor Day. Um, so, John, I got two questions. Um, mm -hmm. sure. One is, how much did Aquarian uh, credit you uh, uh, on on the bill? How much was the bill, and then what did they yeah. credit you? I think it was roughly twenty percent for that right. for that for that one. Yeah, I think it was twenty or twenty five percent. They they sent me a check for about a hundred dollars, and I think the I think the water bill that month was for something. Okay. Was that your service pipe, or was it like an irrigation pipe or something? No, it was just the water inflow pipe. I think. Yeah, that's what that. And, and um, what is the abatement? You're, how much? How much are you looking for from the town? Well, so the the math I did, I went back to quarterly periods and and saw the average of three thousand. Now you could argue that you know, you know, I mean, I I, I was thinking seven thousand to seven. 7,500 of cubic feet, but that's just the overage based on a straight line average. But, uh, you know, we've, we've already paid the bill in, in full. So I'm at, I'm at your, um, at, at your whim to decide what is fair. Um, what was, what was the number then? How much was that number? Uh, like dollar wise. I mean, I think we paid roughly, I think the bill is probably like $1,100 we paid. So it would be something in the order of, and I, I think our quarterly bills are usually in the three to 400 range. So it'd be 700 ish. Right. But what's your, what's your, is that the sewer portion yes. or is that yes. the total? So the, the, well, I, um, I'm just, I'm just giving you the total figure. I, I mean, I, our total bill is usually about 400. We had a, we had a betterment for a bunch of years, but that's over. Right. So I think it's just mostly sewer. So uh, Lisa, um, on the application that John made, does he have how much he wants? Yeah, well, I calculated it out, um, and it's six hundred and sixty-five dollars and seventy cents. Okay, thank you, Lisa, because there is some some part of that that's the actual transport, right? Or yeah, now, now John, do you have an underground sprinkler system? Nope. No. Did you? Do you we, have, we, have lead. we would be impossible here. We actually have a. Um, we actually have a grinder pipe because I guess there's a very lot of ledge where we are in Spindrift. Right, but do you have a do you have a, a lawn that you water? Do you I water don't water. I don't water the water lawn at all. In fact, uh, our lawn looked like uh, straw this summer. I put fertilizer down, and then I, I I rely on Mother Nature, and it was a very dry summer. All right, um, Lisa, what on the history of the account? What was What's the average for the, or the, the, the high points for the last couple of years? So um, based on the past, let's see, I went from um, November, 2016, bill, bill, um, 2017, 2018, 2019, mm -hmm. average for sewer was $260. So he is at <clears throat> he's what six sixty five what what number are we starting yeah, at well, yeah six sixty five seventy oh <clears throat> I'm just concerned that uh, we didn't get to the root of the problem here the the water meter is recording all the water use the leak sounds like it was before the meter, so wouldn't it have been recorded on the use? So where did the where did the water use go? That was after the meter. Um, uh, I, I I I don't know the, the technical nuances of what you're saying. I, I, I'm I'm sorry, I'm not following because all I know is that water 
came into it came in it was it was flowing towards our house i'm going to use i'm going to avoid using upstream and downstream because i don't want to talk out of school here um i was an economics major not a not a water major so water is coming into our house and then on the way into our house it there was a break in the pipe it became evident when we saw lots of water outside on a walk in the morning and so that water was gushing out and so it never actually reached the house Right, so it never reached your meter, John, is what I'm saying. Right. And it was never recorded. So the, the billing is using the meter itself. All that water that was leaking out in your driveway wouldn't have been recorded, wouldn't have been known about anyways. It's well, not reflected in your bill. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that intuitively makes sense to me. However, the, the gentleman that came out from Aquarian at first who told me this, he said, you should call the town. Would I call the town right away? Because he said, you're going to get billed you're going to get, you're going to get double hit on this, like a double tax. So, I mean, I, I can't explain any other, I mean, we, we, we were, like I said, we were away for two weeks this summer. And we, we use minimal water. I don't, I don't water anything outside. You know, we, you know, th th this, there, there's no other, like, I, I, I hear what you're saying, but there's no other explanatory variable here. Sure. To, there's uh, there's only one there. possibility. You got it. And that is, that there's a meter pit before the house. That's. I, I think there is a meter pit before the house. And, and that's why I'm saying, I, I, I don't think that the, um, that, that, that aperture or that, whatever that thing is, the bottom of the driveway, they said that that was measuring it when it's getting hit there. I, I, bl I believe the meter is, we have a gas meter, or not a gas meter, we have an electric meter attached to our house. But I think that meter is actually at the bottom of our driveway underneath that, that valve. Because they said that you can get valve insurance or something like that. But we didn't have it, so we had to pay the twenty five hundred dollars right. to fix it. <clears throat> I don't know though. I mean, I, I'm I'm really like I'm I'm really a, a neophyte when it comes to this stuff. I just know that the bill was three or four times what it usually is, right. like for no other reason. Okay. John, how does five hundred dollars sound to you? Uh, that's that sounds fair. I mean, any, anything you're offering sounds fair because again, this is you guys are um, nice to consider this. Well, I think he has a meter pit. Yeah, I, I you know, I, I almost want to, you know, I think I'm, I'm sort of hung up on, you know, it's sort of like, you know, pumping gas into your car. Yeah. Um, you know, you're, you're, you're getting billed on what goes into the tank and, you know, the same type of thing here. So there's got to be an, ex, an explanation to this as to why. Um, okay. okay. How about we postpone this till the 15th and I go over and look at the property and give me the address and stuff and see if there's a meter pit there. If it is, then I think that, that he has a- That's the only, that's the, I mean, that's the only way I can see. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I apologize for not having the, uh, the, the, the terminology down. I, I, like I said, I'm a, I'm a bond manager. I manage money, not, not uh, water situations. And I was just trying to be conscientious here and, and get this fixed as soon as possible. And I, I do think, that what you're saying makes sense to me on, on the meter pit. But I, but again, I wish I had had, you know, wish I knew more about this stuff. Okay. All right. Well, I'm willing yeah. to. Yeah, well, I, yeah, uh, Wayne, why don't you do that? And then we can just, we can bring it up quickly the next meeting. Yes, okay. All right, thank you, John, for calling in. Thanks. So do, do you need me any further for the 15th or do you want to just? Uh... No, I don't think so. No. Okay. Okay. All right, thank you. Yep. All right, bye. Lisa, I, can, you, can you send me his address? 15 sure. Spindrift. 15? Yep. Hmm. Okay. And it's John Curran. Okay, thank you. All right, the next abatement is 345 um, Forest Ave. We discussed this at the last meeting. Um, I have to look further into this, so what, um, if you don't mind, we can postpone this one till the next meeting. Yeah. Um, and then we have a new one, 419 Jerusalem Road. So um, I have a comment on this, Lisa, before we get into doing it. Um, I'm sure people have looked at, at, at the actual request. Um, we, should, we should somehow have an electronic request that the town can post for abatements. Um, you know, I mean, I, I don't know the, I don't want, I don't want to sound 
too contradictory to this gentleman, but um, most of it looks like hieroglyphics here. I, I can't read everything. And I have a good idea what he's saying, but um, I think if we had something that we had an electronic form, people could fill out, you know, typewritten, it would be a lot easier for us to, rather than to try to interpret uh, what's being said. Okay. All right. Let's see what I can do. But it looks like, I mean, if I, if I get it, it looks like he's got a major, I mean, he's got a 2,500 uh, abatement request. He's basically saying that the contractor should have installed a second meter, but he didn't do it. Right. And I did speak with Brenda about this um, also. And um, they, they um, it's, this house is in um, being constructed. So they're not even living there. Um, Jerusalem Road, 419 Jerusalem Road. Uh, oh, is this the one across from the Templar house? No, this would be, this would, I don't know, like 419, oh, Jerusalem. The uh, question of Roy's. It has to be on the ocean side before Forest Avenue. Um, because Forest Ave is, Forest Ave and Jerusalem Road is 500. So it's, so it's by Linden Drive area. So it's on the ocean side though. I'm just trying to think. There's a couple that are like up by the Roy's. They're doing some work, but they only just started. I mean, I do it. I do a Jerusalem cruise every morning. So um, i trying to think. So if you look at the, um, the package that I sent over by email yesterday, there, I included the notes, the billing notes. That might shed some light. This is uh, between Rustway and Deep Run, closer to Deep Run. I think it was part of the uh, three homes that were connected up privately over there, along the ocean. So somebody hit a service line? Yeah. They should be paying for it then. So he was told back in, in November, the, excuse me, September the 1st to get a second meter. Did the water department give him any kind of an abatement? I don't think so, but I can confirm with Brenda. It would have been in the notes, so I'm thinking no. Yeah, but how can he, this is going on for six months. I know. And it looks like. So he closed on the property in August. I mean, he uses a ton of water. So 10 one, so that, oh. Yeah, a lot of this looks to me, it's coming off of the broken, uh, I mean, that jump from 6,800 to 8,200, 82,000, sorry, is in the period where um, they broke, they're fixing a broken shutoff and then Paragon hit a service line shutoff. Mm -hmm. They should be paying for this, not us. Well, again, the question is before the meter or after the meter?
Yeah, I think we get to get some more information on this, uh, Lisa, and particularly whether the water department uh, granted any kind of relief. Okay. And I'll um, see if the resident can attend the next meeting. I think the real problem is he should have put, he should have filed an abatement back in, well, he should have put the second meter in because he knew that, but um, back in August, like you say, and not, not have it go. Um, into the, into the next billing period. Yeah, it'd be also interesting to see, you know, whether or not his contractor gave him any, I mean, you know, I understand we have to figure out where the meter is and all that sort of thing. But I mean, if the, if the contractor busted a line or something, I mean, we shouldn't be paying for it. Yeah, but it's two different things. One, one is the cost of repairing it and the other is the... Right, but if they broke it and there was a considerable water flow and, and therefore, which is why we're here, then if right. they broke it, they, you know. Right. But the water isn't coming into our sewer. That's the, that's the thing. If, in fact, that's the case. Yeah. No, I get it. I get it. I would... I would I think we just postpone it till the 15th and then see if we can get that, those answers, Lisa. Yep. And see what else, what other information he can give us, even photograph of where the, the meter is and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Anything else we need to discuss? Folks? Yes. So um, Brian wasn't able to attend the meeting this morning, um, but he asked me to um, bring up that um, they selected GHD to perform the strategic planning slash decision matrix. Oh, so they did the uh, they did the plan of study plan back I think five years ago, six years ago, something like that. Okay. Yeah. And then um, he'll be scheduling a stakeholders meeting soon, which he'll let us know probably by tomorrow. Um, so um, he's asking your availability in the next week or two um, for best times for a stakeholders meeting. Stakeholders being whom? With um, GHD, I think. Lisa, can you get a copy out of our file of the report that he did for us so that we can sort of review that a little bit? Um, I, I have a copy. I have a copy of it. Okay. I have a copy. I, it is. Okay. I, have a copy. I can... be here should look at it. So. Yeah. It's one of the appendices. Yep. Yeah, it's in the white paper. It's on the, it, it, excuse me, it should be on the website. So you could just pull it right off of that way. Oh, good. But, um, I guess, I guess, Lisa, my question, and maybe I'll just, you know, ask directly. Uh, um, I thought that the select board was running this process. Have they, have they given it to uh, uh, Brian to, to manage? I don't know. Okay. I'll find out. I would think so, probably. Are you, um, is there any specific um, times that you're not available over the next <laughs> every day um, I'd have to get back to you and find and and, and, um, and let you know I'm kind of crammed up right now okay. John and Wayne are you do you have any days that you're not available uh, that's the wrong question I think you su should suggest some dates and then we yeah. can respond. Yeah, that's probably the better way to do it. 
Um, and and would and I I would this will be with the the sewer board it, itself. We're not going to have any other um, distractions invited to this meeting. I'll ask. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, anything else, guys? That's all nope. I had. All right, I'll make a motion that we adjourn. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Um, was there something? Oh, we we're going to bring up capital. Never mind. We already talked about that. We already talked about yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, I make a motion to adjourn this meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Second. All right. Okay. Aye. All right, thank you, everyone.